Hello Commanders, and welcome to Episode 5, Part 3. We're going to do the Command tab today. There's a lot going on here, so I'm going to be quick. So first on the home screen, you'll notice in the top right, it has your power level. That is your power level, not your hero's, even though it's by the hero's head. It shows you a picture of your hero, and behind her is the team you've built around her. It says the name of the hero, and you can change it here. We're not going to do that now because that is the same screen as the hero loadout screen. On the bottom right you'll see for Xbox click the left stick whatever it says there see all stats and you can see everything you've got going on and I won't go through all of these I'll let you take a look at them in your own time. It does show you party shared I'll tell you that so when someone joins your party they get the party shared and that's why power levels go up is because it raises your fort stat. On the bottom left, it's got your level and an XP bar, your total XP boost, and the opportunity to use an XP boost if you want to. Decline that, and notice I have a total XP boost plus 130%. Notice here it says duration will be extended if you use an XP boost while already boosted. Using one doesn't change the 130%, it just stretches out for how long you get the bonus. You'll notice the uh, Next reward is technology, and I'll get plus 8 to that, so that's nice. That will up my fort stats and technology, affects traps, ability damage, and something else. So, good stuff. Well, that's it for this screen. Hero upgrade inspect on the bottom right is just to the hero screen. We'll look at that in a second. Coming in here, we're going to do manage first. Alright, so this shows you all of your heroes. First thing we're going to do is down in the bottom right it says more. If you hit that and hit tile size, you can change the size of your tiles if you like to look at them bigger. I do not, so we'll change it back. Notice that I have arch chest first. And then way down here, I have... Well, these are sorted by rating. Hold on a second. Funny, Arch Jess is first by name too. So I have Arch Jess here, and way down here we have Assassin Sarah. But if we go into more, turn off prioritized favorites, now it's Arch Jess and then Assassin Sarah. So when you're trying to limit, uh, you only want one of each hero, you want one of the best uh, rarity you have. So when you're trying to figure out do I have any duplicates, that's how the best way to do it is turn off prioritize favorites, sort them by name, and they'll be right by each other. Just be a little bit careful because there are a couple cases where they can be by each other and they look like each other, but they're different names. So, you know, be a little careful. They are different pictures, but they're not obviously different pictures. Alright, on the top it says sorted by name. We just went through that. On the bottom right it says for Xbox left stick. I already did some of this, but that just changes the sorting. I'll let you look at the different sorting types. It tells you how much XP you have. This is XP is also used for defenders, so if you want to level up your defenders, save some. Underneath that, it says you're looking at all of them. And then for Xbox, it's got left trigger and right trigger to move through. We will do that, so I purposely left Blood Finder and Heavy Base Kyle as new, so we could go in here, get the new one, Go to sorted by name, and we can see that he's the only one with that name. So he's a new one. If we want, we can favorite him. Alright, and then Heavy Base Kyle, he is not unique. We already have one. So that's a good thing. So we can compare then the two. There we go. So one is level one, one is level two, it shows you all the differences between the two. So if you're trying to figure out which hero to use, and they're not the same ones, I'm using the same one to show you the difference that one level makes. But if you're using, if you're trying to figure out what hero to make, use, and the core of uh, health shield, that type of thing is important, there you go. You'll get a chance to look, compare them and look at it. All right. These are all of the heroes that I have, that I have everything I need to level up. So I could level any of these up, 
from where they are. And I will leave that to you. Level up is in upgrade and inspect, and we'll do that in a sec. Look at only your soldiers, only your constructors, only your ninjas, and only your outliners. We'll go back to all here. So inside, let's take our new guy here, Bloodbinder. Notice that uh, I can't retire him. But I can retire Brainiac Joji right next to it. The reason is because he's favorited. If you can't retire, if there's no retire option on this menu, that means they're in a loadout, they're favorited, or they're on an expedition. If they're in a loadout, take them out of the loadout, you can retire them. If they're on an expedition, wait for it to come back or cancel the expedition, and then you can retire them. If they're favorited, just unfavor them, and then you can retire them. All right. So we can go in here, upgrade inspect. This is the screen you get to whenever you're going to inspect or upgrade your hero. Notice on the, toward the bottom on the right, it says Y level up. I have plenty of XP, so we'll take him right up to level 10. You can move this around. Oh, well, I don't have enough to go to level 10. Huh. Okay, I'm not gonna do all of it because we wanna do, we'll take him to fifth level. There we go, and then hit Y to confirm. Boom, he levels up. Alright, so on the cards, you see his base stats on the left. The up arrow, the yellow up arrow next to his level means he could level up. And he could, as you can see, I have enough XP to level him. If you look in the bottom right. It tells you what class he is, it tells you what his power level is, it tells you how far he's been evolved, so he's one star. And it tells you what level he is. And that gives you health, shield, and then detailed information. On the right is the perks he gives. So as the commander, he increases anti-material charge and damage by 225%. As a member of the team, he only does it by 75%. Not sure how I'm going to use him, but it intrigues me. So if you see up by perks it's got the R stick on Xbox if you flick the right joystick you'll get over here his abilities are Teddy, Seismic, Smash, and Phase Shift each one will have different ones there's only three or four for each class but they come in different orders and one will be missing uh, he's missing Shock Tower so um, that he'll never get Shock Tower, so that's a, one of the differences between heroes. Um, Shock Tower is the other uh, Outlander ability. So, Teddy is there and accessible and we'll be able to use it. Until we get to 2 star evolution, we can't use Seismic Smash. And until we get to 3 star evolution, we can't use Space Shit. You can upgrade him, use evolution, level him up. And that's it. If you have a lesser rarity one, upgrade also includes increased rarity. And that costs two flux. I don't have any epic flux. I have enough. Do we have an epic I want to be a legendary? I'll probably get base Kyle, but man, he's so it seems. Well, that's controller Harper. Which penny is that? She's a good one too. Um, we'll do it with base Kyle. I probably shouldn't because I will get him my next llama, but we'll do this. So then if you hit increase or confirm upgrade rarity here, notice it costs a hundred legendary flux. You can buy legendary flux in the store. Um, 50 a week. So every two weeks you can do that with somebody. And I'm happy about that because I'm using base Kyle on the load. Or have yeah, base Kyle. Alright, on the right you can get the stats. What abilities they have unlocked and what's still locked. Stats. And bonuses. So he increases building health. Regardless of whether he's the lead or in the team. And if he's the lead, he does it by a lot more. And that was part of the reason I wanted to 
up in because I use him for that. So then we can go into the hero loadout screen. On the bottom left you see that see all stats wherever you see that you'll get the same list. Sometimes the window will be crushed together so you have to scroll more but it's the same exact information just presented a little bit differently. Alright. So I have Mega Base leading this team and there's Space Kyle. I will probably swap him to the lead now that he's a legendary. Mega Base was there for the hit points. So in your loadout this is the leader and you can change him to whatever you want. The team perk. You will gather these as you get heroes. Almost every, if not every, mythic comes with a team perk, and some legendaries come with a team perk. Sometimes you have to do a small quest to get them. Uh, Blakebeard's Stash is probably the most infamous one. You have to run around and collect chests, or you can use Blakebeard's Stash to generate chests. But once you have them, you can apply them to any team, as long as the team meets the requirements. So like, keep out here for each soldier. Well, the leader has to be a soldier. And it should say that. No, requires two Fort Nightmares hero. Well, that's trick or treat. Requires a commander with the frag grenade ability. Well, only soldiers get frag grenade abilities, so that's why it's marked as with an exclamation point. We can't use it on this loadout. But as long as you can meet the requirements, not do, but can. So like Blast from the Past, I don't have two dino heroes in this loadout, but it still shows as acceptable because I could have two dino heroes. Alright. Then you pick your team, and it's much the same way. Notice it says X, hold, toggle, toggle descriptions in the bottom right. Hold whatever button that is for you on your platform. And then all of them have their description showing all the time. If you turn it off, only the one you have selected shows the description, so whatever you prefer. And you do the same for each of these, then you select your gadgets. These are the gadgets that you upgrade with upgrade points. And you can pick any two you want. Probably the only one you never see is Proximity Mine. All the others are used at some point. Um, supply Drop is really popular early in ventures when you don't have anything. Because you can drop it in 3-4 times in a match and, and get your materials built up. This is a pretty standard loadout, uh, stationary hover, tur hover turret and adrenaline rush, but uh, the others are all used also. Notice on the top left it tells you what the health and shield are, that's of the entire combined team. So if we go to another team, they can be vastly different. And that's got blast from the past, which, which zeroes your shield and doubles your health, that's why it looks like that. Alright. That should be it for this screen. Okay, defenders. Just like everything else, you've got the tile size prioritized. Collection book indicator is interesting. Things not in the collection book have a collection book symbol on them. So if you're trying to max out your collection book, that's how you can tell what you have. We don't have anything for reset, but reset indicator will show you things that Epic has made a change to and they're offering you a chance to set it back to zero and re-level it with the new stuff. Mark all is seen, gets rid of any new stuff. That's about it. So new ones, one's ready to level up. Only AR defenders. Now notice these have abilities on the card on the right. Increases weapon fire rate by 18%. That's everybody, not just the defender. So your weapon fire rate goes up. Some of these, whoop, some of these are sweet. But I'm looking for one. I think it's under SMGs. Increase weapon reload speed by 30%. If you've got a hero using an SMG that's just burning through clips, Put this guy in a box somewhere, even if you don't like using defenders, put him in a completely enclosed space, you'll get that benefit for your hero. Now, I don't have it yet because I haven't leveled him up and it comes at level 5. But uh, make sure you, you're making use of your defenders there. I did mention that XP is hero XP, so the defenders and heroes share an XP pool, nothing else does in the game. 
so make sure you keep some set aside for your defenders and sniper defenders. This account uses more melee defenders than anything, and that's because of a fluke in the Xbox system. Notice the inventory says 421 of 450. That is heroes, survivors, defenders, and schematics all added up. So if that gets too high and you're starting to get things locked out, you need to delete somewhere. It doesn't matter where, because they all use the same numbers, but you need to delete somewhere. Or you need to go to the shop and buy some armory slots, which are available, I don't think they're weekly, I think it's in the seasonal store. The right button and left button that I have not been explaining to you, I've not been explaining because they take you in different ways. This takes you to the next tab that has something on it. So heroes, schematics, survivors, defenders, it's, it's basically the next collection tab. So I don't generally use them because they're not predictable. And finally, expeditions. So expeditions are AFK gameplay. A popular one is the red toolboxes, this is 65. There's a 685 target one. Now what you do is you assign heroes and a vehicle, and they go out and do whatever it is, like this one is, search the area for resources. Okay? So we can do that. If you have more than one vehicle, oh, I'm sorry, down in the bottom it says R, change vehicle, hit whatever that key is. It says, select vehicle. I only have a dirt bike, so that's all I get. Right now, I don't even have all the slots for the dirt bike opened up. So, notice where it says slot bonuses, soldier on the left. If you choose a soldier, they will have a higher number than they normally would. So, we can send Big Feet Wildcat if we want. And she is over. Well, she's just shy of squad power. We'll send Shrapnel, and then any. Well, little hero, doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. He won't get us there. Will he? 96. Oh. What do you think, Clippy? We'll send Clip, Cassie, whatever the name is. Then when you hit Start Expedition, notice in the bottom right it says 594 slash 25 research points. So it costs 25 to do this expedition. And we have 594, so we're good. Start the expedition. Say confirm, and now we have one in the ones that are going, and it will be back in 16 hours, basically. You can look at only land ones, only sea ones, only air ones, or you can look at all of them, or you can look at just the ones you've got up. You can abandon an expedition, and now I have none in progress. When they come back, you'll get whatever it advertises, if it says it returns, uh, Survivors, you'll get survivors. It says materials, you'll get materials. There are some super high level, super rare ones that return some pretty nice stuff. But generally speaking, you're just going to get useful things that you can use while you're out adventuring. Alright. Survivors. Another collection, same options. So we'll skip that. This screen is not real useful. Um, you can sort by set bonus which will show you all of the uh, we go. all of the melee damage bonus ones together but then they're not by personality you can sort by personality and that's a little better but honestly it's easier to do in the squad screen than it is here so I'm not going to go too much into this the one useful thing here, if you're getting a lot of survivors and you're running out of space in your inventory, is Batch Retire. And Batch Retire will let you select a bunch of them to retire. You can also, from here, set Auto Retire. I have survivors set to Uncommon. So Uncommon or Common Survivors, when I get them out of a Llama, are automatically retired. I canceled that so you'll notice the XP is at the top just like it is on the hero screen and you can spend that XP anytime new ones are here and I left a few so we could see once you clicked over them they're gone 
because you've seen them. Ones that are ready to level up and I have everything required to level them up. Leaders only and non-leaders only. As you can see, I've been very lucky with mythic leads. I'm power level 44 and I've got almost a full set already. Those last few will probably kill me. <laughs> Squad is where it's useful. So if there's a lock, you haven't opened that slot yet. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of them. There are eight squads, two each for fortitude, offense, resistance, and tech. And each one adds to its associated ability. So there is a help here, which basically tells you what you need to do. Which is, you pick a leader whose symbol matches the squad. So notice the little caduces next to EMT squad. This leader has a caduce in the, in the right. It's got a crown, some squiggly lines, and a caduce. The caduce is the match. And then the squiggly lines are her personality, and she is pragmatic. So then you pick members of the squad that are also pragmatic. Now I have, if you go into change, you don't want by rating. Right away, click leader personality match. So I have a power level 64, and that would up my power level. But I like having a little bit of trap durability bonus, and honestly, I'm not in a rush to get my power level up, but if you are, go with the highest level, highest rarity survivors that match the leader's personality, and you'll be good. All right, you can clear them by holding down X. I don't wish to do that. And you can turn auto fill back on. I have it off, so you can see my squads are pretty well managed. And I would not turn auto fill back on at this point. About mid Plankerton, late Plankerton, you want to do that. You want to turn it off and manage it yourself. All right, upgrades are gadgets and tools. Tools are things that help you in every mission, no matter what squad you have or what loadout you're using, like the size of your backpack, build and repair speed, building health, your storm shield storage vault, which is for me is currently at 40, and if I do the next upgrade, it'll go to 60. And the pickaxe upgrade. Lots of people like the pickaxe upgrade because this not only makes your pickaxe better for use when gathering materials, but it also gives you ones to use in Battle Royale. It gives you pickaxe uh, skins. What are they called? Flare, bling, whatever. The, I forget what they're called. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> anyway, um, gadgets are things that you can select. Like I had on that one loadout, I had... Adrenaline Rush and Hover Turret. This is where you choose, or where you upgrade them, and then you can choose them in the loadout to use. Notice some of these are locked by account level. Some I have not enough points for because I have zero points right now. But I can't upgrade uh, my Adrenaline Rush again until I'm level 185 and I'm only level 143 up in the top left or top right there. Next might be bugs. Preview upgrades will let you flick through and see the text underneath the video changes and lets you see what you get in the future. See, so you can plan ahead. All right. Research. This is where a big chunk of your power level comes from. Fortnite off or <laughs> fortitude, offense, resistance, and tech. Your fort stats. And when people say fort stats, this is what they're talking about. There's not a lot to do here. You can show details, which shows you how fast you're generating them and what your storage limit is. And it shows you what benefit you're getting from them right now. You can... I don't... Uh, I tried to save enough to, to level one up, and I apparently started this about an hour too soon. So we don't have enough, but I do them one at a time, starting with tech and going down to fortitude, and then go back and do it again. Around level 60, I switch to doing them 10 at a time. And the reason is that you get the biggest boost at 10. So rather than do 40 of them and then get the big boost, I do 10, get a boost, 10, get a boost, 10, get a boost, 10, get a boost. The only reason I do it one at a time until about level 60 is because uh, you're going up fast enough. You can do it either way. 
keep them about the same. You don't want them too different because, sure, you'll have a great offense if you spend all your research points on offense, but the others will be weaker and offense will get more expensive faster because every 10 it goes up, the cost to do research goes up. So it currently costs me 1800 to get one point on any of these. If they were separated, you could have one of them cost 1800 and one cost 300 So you want to keep them close. Finally, the profile. You can use XP boost here. It's just like when you do it on the command tab. It takes you to the same dialog, does the same thing. You can also give XP boosts to your friends. When you give them to your friends, you get a boost too. When you give them to yourself, anyone who joins your party gets a boost too. So you can actually get, just from XP boosts, up around 75% if everybody's using them, which is nice. So, um, use them if you're playing with friends. Use them if you're playing solo. No reason not to. Notice on the bottom it's got the same level bar. Uh, the difference is it shows you the next five rewards. So I got some good rewards coming up. Uh, that tech at level 144, I'm going to go do that as soon as we're done because um, you know, I use a lot of abilities and I use a lot of traps. So I like that. Account boosts? I've never had one. And you probably won't either, but if uh, you're getting a bonus and you don't know why, you can look there. I will note that your current XP on the XP bar is yellow, boosted XP is blue, and daily bonus XP is green. And I've used my daily bonus XP, that's why there's nothing green on there. Hey, I do believe that is all. It is all. Okay, well that was much faster than the other runs I've tried to make at this, and I'm just going to stop it there. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you have any thoughts on what I could do better, please let me know. And give us a like and subscribe. It's Mr. Mean Raindrop. Gone.